In this Image Quantil version 10 tutorial video, we will be looking at the Array Analysis module. We will be looking at the entire workflow for Array Analysis and specifically the following steps. Image Import, Grid Definition, Background Definition and the different options we have there, Normalization, Quantity Calibration, Presence Flagging, and Data Export. Once the Array Analysis module is open, the first step is going to be importing our image that we'd like to analyze. For this video, we will be utilizing the tutorial images which are already preloaded in the software. This module is best utilized for multi-well plates or dot blocks that you can see here that have signal in an organized array. Once I have an image open, I like to look at the quality of the image where I can look here and see if there's any saturation which should be denoted by orange pixels in this 2D rendering as well as in the 3D rendering, which shows us here that the image needs to be inverted so that our signal intensities are coming out of the background rather than going in. So we can go ahead and select Invert here, followed by adjusting our display, which you can do so using this button here. What I like to do is go to a full brightness and contrast setting here, looking at the entire dynamic range, and then narrowing down to the area that we would like to utilize. So you can pull this upper threshold down, and once we're here, we can also apply any color filter as well. So me personally, I like to have a white background with dark wells that denote signal. So what I'll do is I'll adjust this for black denoting signal. And that will once again, adjust our image. Now that we have imported and adjusted our image, we can begin the analysis workflow, which starts with defining our grid. Along the right side, you can see that we have three steps that we must complete. We must define our new grid, edit that grid, and if necessary, we can edit individual wells. Below this, you can see that we can adjust how many columns and how many rows that we can have within our array. We also have some predefined options for a 96 well plate or a 3D4 well plate. In this case, we're going to utilize the 96 well plate settings and define our grid in our image. You can start by clicking on one of the wells in one of the top corners, clicking and dragging to the opposite corner. From here, we can then adjust the relative well size. I like to adjust these where the defined well is just inside the total well so that we are not getting any edge effects from the outside of that well. In this case, I will adjust this down to here and we can see that our wells are now the appropriate size where we're not going to have effects from the outside of each well. Next, we can edit our grid to make sure that our wells are properly defined within each one of our four corners. You could take and pull on each one of these four corners to get it to line up exactly correct to make sure that our grid is properly aligned. From here, we can also edit individual wells if we needed to. You can so go ahead and click on any well, and you can adjust the relative position by clicking and dragging this square, or the relative size by adjusting this diamond that's around the perimeter. We can also adjust the well shape. So you can see here we have options for either circles or squares. In this case, we'll stick with circles. We can also see that we have now begun to generate data and we have total pixel intensities for each one of our wells displayed in the table below. Now that we have defined our wells, we can then move on to the next step, which is background subtraction. Background subtractions are done to get rid of any signal that is not coming from our samples. It gives us a more accurate representation of the relative pixel volumes of our different wells. There are several different ways that we can do a background subtraction shown in this pull down menu over here. We can do a localized background subtraction for each individual well using surface minimum, which takes away the lowest pixel intensity in each defined well from the rest of the pixels within that same well. We can also do an edge average, which takes the average of the pixel intensities around the outside of the well and takes that away from all of the pixels within the well. Most commonly, we can use a negative control, which we can define one of our wells as a negative control, and it's gonna take the average pixel intensity within that well and take it away from all of the other pixels in the other wells. We can utilize an image rectangle where we can define a rectangle somewhere on the image and the average pixel intensity within that image rectangle will be taken away from all of the other pixels in the defined wells. For this image, we are going to utilize a negative control. The first step is going to selecting which well that we would like to use for our negative control. In this case, we're going to use this well down here. Once you've selected your well, you can then choose to set your negative control. 
And you can see that our pixel volumes for each well have now been redefined using the background subtraction. Now that we've performed our background subtraction, we can move on to the normalization step. Normalization uses a defined reference well or a set of wells to give us a relative pixel volume rather than the absolute volumes that are currently shown in the table at the bottom. These normalized well volumes can be beneficial because the normalized volumes can accurately portray these relative sample amounts between our different wells. And also normalized well volumes allow us to compare wells between different images. To set your reference well or set of wells, you go ahead and create a box around them up here in our image. I'm going to go ahead and choose these two as they are duplicates and we can use the average between them. Once you've chosen your wells, you can go ahead and select set reference well and you can see our values are now normalized. Next, we can choose which scale factor we would like to use. You can use anything from 1 up to 1000. And in this case, we're going to choose 1000 since we are comparing and quantifying both high abundance and low abundance samples. Finally, down here at the bottom, you can choose if you have multiple wells, whether you want to do the average volume between your multiple wells or if you want to do the total volume. Next, we are going to visit the quantity calibration step in the analysis workflow. Quantity calibration is used when we have a set of known sample amounts in several of our wells. We can use those known sample amounts to make a standard curve, which can then be used to determine the amount of sample in all of our other wells. In order to do this, you simply select one of your standard wells, choose add that well, and then you can put in the known amount that we know is there. As an example, I will call this one 100 we can select multiple wells with their relative sample amounts. Once we've input the amounts of all of our standards, you can see we've generated the standard curve here, as well as all of the values down here have now been fit to that standard curve to get the sample amounts in each one of our wells. Finally, down here on the right, you can choose what type of curve fit that you would like. In this case, the linear fit fit quite well, so we're gonna go ahead and stick with the straight line. The final step in the analysis workflow is to perform a presence flagging. Presence flagging provides us a simple binary yes or no answer for each well that tells us whether the sample is present or absent. We set a flagging threshold where anything above that value is present and below is absent, and you can see the results down in the data table at the bottom. We set our flagging threshold either as a percentage or maximum well volume, which you can see here, where we have it set to 10% right now, or you can set the threshold as a specified well. So for example, if you selected this well, you could set that as present. Anything below that value would be determined absent. Anything above will be determined as present. Now that we've completed our analysis, we can choose how our results are displayed in the table at the bottom. So you can choose to display everything. So for example, all wells. And then we have different parameters that are displayed. You could choose which parameters are displayed in the columns from this options level here. And once we've determined how we want our results to be displayed, you can choose to copy them and paste them into Excel. We can also choose to export our image into Excel by simply right-clicking on the image and choosing Copy to Clipboard.